we're not going to look at a problem that involves both lines and planes. So what I've provided here are two planes. They're equations have been modified. Wouldn't be too difficult to sketch these if we wanted to try to sketch them using the triangle method that I previously demonstrated. But what we're going to investigate here is um, what is happening where these two planes intersect? What is this intersection of these two planes? Now, the easiest way to do this would be probably to leave the paper, and if you happen to be indoors, um, where two walls meet each other, that would be the intersection of two planes. You know, what happens where two, two walls meet each other? So, you know, I could, I could put two walls here, but then you lose sort of uh, part of the, the imagination issue. If you think of where this plane, this card, touches my paper, which is another plane, there is a line of intersection. There is a line of intersection. And what we are going to do is we are going to write the parametric equations of that line of intersection. So our objective is to write the parametric equations of this line of intersection. Okay, so please remember if we're trying to write parametric equations of a line, what we are going to need is uh, well maybe a, a base model to look at here. You know, so it'll be an x equals a y equals and a z equals. Let me just go back to my little paper model here. I guess I'm going to need to know what direction that line is going, and I guess I'm going to need to know, you know, like hey, what about this point right here, where the paper and the plane uh, meet each other? How do I find the coordinates of a point? because the line has coordinates to start at, and then it needs a direction to go. So I want you to consider or think about, I wonder what's harder to find, the direction the, plane, the line needs to go, what, what is that direction of that line, or finding the coordinates of that point. And so it turns out that that's sort of an opinion question. Some people could think it's easier to find the direction and some people could think it's easier to find the coordinates of the point. I actually feel like um, it's sort of a toss up from a teacher point of view. And so I'm, I'm gonna do this in two steps. We're gonna find the point on this line of intersection or a point on this line of intersection first. This is the slightly more algebraically intensive part of the problem. We'll do that in Messier Algebra first. The concept of the direction is a little bit harder, but the math is not as difficult once you know the concept. So this concept that we're looking at now is how do we find one point where the, the, the two planes meet? You know, so I have a line here. How do I find one of these points that's on that line? And so to do that, I want you to um, look at this from a different window. So these two planes could be anywhere in space. They could be intersecting in any way, shape, or form. I mean, that line could be going in any direction. So let's just toss the planes aside here and let's look at our line. So let's suppose that this is our line of intersection right here in three dimensions. All right, this is not going to be very fancy here, but I'm going to put up a model 
of, I have my XY plane on the ground. There's the X axis and there's the Y axis. And the Z axis is coming straight out at you. All right, and now we have this line here. This line eventually passes through this plane, which is the Y, Z plane, where all X values are zero. It eventually passes through this plane, the X, Z plane, where all Y values are zero. And it also hits the ground where Z is zero. Now, if the line happened to be parallel to one of these, what I'm about to do would come up with no solution and we would try a different starting place. But let's just assume this line of intersection is gonna hit the ground eventually. So we're gonna let Z equal to zero as our starting point. If these, this line never hits the ground, this will be a no solution method. And we would come back and try letting either Y or letting X equal zero. So the algebra will tell us if we're going the wrong direction. So if Z is zero, 2X plus 3Y plus zero equals two and 4x plus y plus 0 equals 5. And I'm going back now to algebra 1. Let's solve a system of equations. I'm going to choose to use elimination method. I'm now focused on this 2 by 2 system. If I double the top equation, 4x plus 6y equals 4, leave the bottom equation untouched and subtract, I get 5y is negative 1 and the y value is negative 1 fifth. There is one part of my coordinate of intersection. If I were to go back to here again, and let's see, let's times this bottom one by three. So we'll leave two X plus three Y equals two alone. Triple this, 12 X plus three Y equals 15. Times three, times three, times three. And I subtract now, I get negative 10 X equals negative 13. So X is 13 tenths. This just reminds me from algebra why um, the, the point of intersection, it doesn't have to be nice coordinates. But let me show you what we've established so far. We started with the line of intersection hits z equals zero sometime. What we have now are the x and y coordinates, 13 tenths, negative one fifth, zero. This is one one point that's on that line. There are infinitely many points. I could have decided to let Z equals one. Where does the line hit one unit above the ground? If I wanted to do that, there's infinitely many points to choose from. This is one. Now, let's switch to another piece of paper here and show you what we've collected so far. So we have are two planes and I'm attempting to find the line of intersection. So we have the point on the line of intersection, which has coordinates 13 tenths, negative one fifth and Z is zero. What I still do not have is the direction this line goes put a question mark there. But as king of all partial credit seekers, x equals, y equals, and z equals 13 tenths, negative one fifth, zero. I have half of the information I need to write these equations. Now, let's tackle the direction. Let's tackle the direction. Remember, the two planes meet, and we're trying to figure out what direction this line goes. 
Well, I'm gonna use again my little uh, homemade corner that I built here and sort of uh, draw it out with this instead. Let's do it this way. So recall, when we write the equation, there's a normal vector to that plane, and that's in the equation, 4, 1, and 5. That's the normal vector to that plane. There's another normal vector to this plane. That is the numerical values 2, 3, and 1. The line of intersection is right here at the corner. Well, that line is perpendicular to this normal vector and it's perpendicular to that normal vector. How do I find a direction that's perpendicular to both of the normal vectors? Well, that's the cross product. So the normal vector 1 here is 2, 3, and 1. The normal vector 2 here is 4, 1, and 5. The direction of our line of our line of intersection is going to be the cross product of those two vectors. So let's bust out that calculation really fast. I, J, K, 2, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5. Now, if you've continued to practice working on your cross product calculations, you might be able to jump directly to plugging numerical values in here. And otherwise, you might have to write the little small matrices. 15 minus 1 is 14. 2 times 5 is 10. 10 minus 4 is 6, but it's going to be minus the 6. And the k vector is 2 times 1, minus 3 times 4. So 2 minus 12 is going to be negative 10. So that would be the vector 14, negative 6, and negative 10. Let me go back to my little sketch here. That's the direction this line is going. If I multiply this vector by negative 1, I would go the opposite direction on the same line. So I could use it also. All right, some good news. Now that I have the normal vector, I know that the x is increasing by 14, the y is decreasing by 6, and the z is decreasing by 10. And I suddenly have my equation of the line where the two planes intersect. Fun algebra. That was a good little workout, wasn't it? This is a solution. We could have found other points on the line, but I'm just asking you to find one of them. Until next time.